Welcome to the Lake and Heath Late Show, the special Halloween edition. I'm senior airman Amanda Woke, and I'm on my way to the commissary for a special event tonight. My friend, Staff Sergeant Megan Lyon, she's also at the commissary because she had to ask some kids some very important questions about Halloween. So what are you going to be this Halloween? Mm, Batman. Batman. Awesome. So what's your favorite candy? Mm, chocolate. Ah, awesome. Chocolate's my favorite too. I'm here with Tristan. Tristan, are you excited about Halloween? Yes. Yes? Awesome. So what are you going to be this year for Halloween? T-Rex. A T-Rex. Ah, oh, that's awesome. So what's your favorite candy? What are you hoping to get the most of this year? Cheats. Cheese. Cheese? Ah, that's a yummy, yummy treat. Kids, what are you going to do with them? Okay, so I've got the candy from the commissary. Now I just have to go get the pizza. Can you guess where I'm going yet? While you're trying to figure it out, here's your Halloween movie fix from Staff Sergeant David DeBrittany, the real sergeant. Darkness falls across the land, and the midnight hour is close at hand. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not Vincent Price, but I am Staff Sergeant David DeBridney, and I'm celebrating my promotion to the real sergeant with a special Halloween episode. So send the kids to bed early, lock the doors, and don't send out for pizza. These are some of my favorite Hollywood horror movies. We start with a classic from 1935, Mad Love. This one features character actor Peter Lorre in a rare starring role as a brilliant surgeon hopelessly in love with a beautiful actress. But alas, this actress is already married to a concert pianist. That's a problem a little well-placed surgery using a, an executed murderer's hands won't solve. This movie isn't a gross-out movie, at least not by today's standards, but it does have a dark, gothic atmosphere, and Peter Lorre turns in a wonderful performance as the Twisted Doctor. And there's also Colin Clive, Dr. Frankenstein himself, this time on the receiving end of some mad science. Now we move up to 1956, in the golden age of sci-fi horror, with Invasion of the Body Snatchers. This movie plays out like an extended episode of The Twilight Zone, with mystery and unease that slowly builds throughout the picture as more and more eerie things start happening in a town. And it's a movie that can not only scare you, but can also make you think as well. And now finally, the creme de la creme of horror for me, we have The Blob. And no, I'm not talking about the corny 1950s version with its cheap special effects and pop song playing over the credits. No, I'm talking about the remake from 1988. This time, it's a new and improved blob, slowly eating its way through a small town, causing some of the most unsettling images I've ever seen committed to film. Whatever you do, don't poke it with a stick. And there you have it, some of my favorite Hollywood horror movies. In this day and age, I usually find scary movies hopelessly predictable and ripe for ridicule. But these three, they still hold your attention, even after all these years. Myself, I've only seen The Blob once, and what they do in that one still gives me the willies. And now it's time for you to start looking through your DVDs and firing up the search engine, because here's our latest movie quote contest. The first person to correctly identify the actor and film that this line appears in and email it to us at this address will receive a coupon for a free popcorn at the Pineview Theater. The line is, only when we have to fight to stay human do we realize how precious it is to us. And there you have it. I'm Staff Sergeant David DeBridney, the real sergeant, and I'll see you at the concession stand. Okay, got the pizza. And last but certainly not least, here's an interview. Not necessarily about Halloween, but if Master Sergeant Kevin Fife wore a costume, he'd probably be a superhero. Because to the 2,000 survivors of the Jalalabad flood in Afghanistan, that's exactly what he is. Welcome back. I'm here with Master Sergeant Kevin Fife 
of the 56th Helicopter Maintenance Unit. He is the superintendent of said unit. How are you doing tonight, sir? I'm hanging in there. <laughs> so, um, we've got some stuff to talk about. A little bit. Because you were in Afghanistan recently, right? That is absolutely correct. I was, uh, it's about a year ago, but yeah, I was recently in Afghanistan. Okay. And a lot of stuff happened there. A lot of stuff went down. Uh, a lot. I would say uh, it was a great opportunity to see a lot of different things in a different perspective, absolutely. There was a flood, right? What, uh, what city was that flood in? Uh, the flood actually was in Jalalabad, was the first area that we uh, responded to during the, the flood rescues. Mm -hmm. So what happened? Uh, there was a, a ton of water everywhere. Animals were floating and doing circles and in the river, and people were waving, and we were like, uh-oh. Let's, let's get ourselves down there. So uh, Colonel Roberts called to uh, start picking up people. And so Colonel Willie and our aircraft decided to go down and start picking up some people. And there were some kids. Uh, we did have some, a, a lot of kids. What was uh, going through your head when you saw, because I guess, you, and correct me if I'm wrong, you were trying to get the kids in and then they got swept down the river. What was going through your head? The, the, the parents, I remember the parents were in front of me uh, and, and, and I, don't ever believe like I was in danger, to be honest with you. So what's going through my head? Uh, help people. They needed help. I, we'd all do the right thing. It's no different. Yes, would some people freeze? Yes. Would some people have done more? Yeah, absolutely. Everybody would have responded differently because in hindsight, we can look at it and say, oh, this is how I would have responded. I, I do it on a daily occurrence. I do it. I have, I, the whole two days replays in my mind. How does it feel to be in Portraits of Courage? It was, it was neat to see that I was nominated for it. I didn't know that I had won it, but I, it was neat to know that, hey, there, there, it's got a little bit more insight on it. So yeah, it was neat. And, and the yeah. other people in Portraits of Courage are, are absolutely heroes and well-deserving. And there was another sergeant here on base that was honored for that. And I talked to the captain that had put, he was one of the 12 outstanding members of the year. I'm, I, to, be, to be even close to that kind of, uh, nowhere near diminishing. I mean, he's 12 outstanding member of the year. I mean, he's a remarkable uh, firefight that he was in. Uh, and, and to be just uh, on a quote unquote non combat side of that and, you know, and talking to his captain and his CGO that, that had put him up for that and how much uh, they respected what he had done and what he had given up for that and led. I mean, putting that same kind of thing, it's just, it's, 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 but it's what, humbling. But what you did, Sergeant, is nothing to see that. Uh, achoo! I'll sneeze at it all day long. We interrupt the Lake and Heath Late Show for this late breaking bulletin. We'd also like to congratulate Tech Sergeant Dustin Goodwin of the 48th Security Forces Squadron and Captain Bill Burnecker of the 48th AMXS, among many others who have recently won awards at RAF Lake and Heath. We now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. So if you haven't guessed yet, I'm at the Public Affairs Rockin' Halloween Party. Amanda, hurry up. The party's just getting started. <laughs> okay, David. I'm Senior Airman Amanda Woke. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a fabulous Halloween. I'll see you next time. Hey! Awesome.